Hey beautiful people, so jumping into today's video and uh, I want to chat about, um, there's been quite a few um, people around me going through some major challenges um, and you know it, it's really good I guess uh, to reflect on some of these things uh, in case one of these things happens to us um, or you may really resonate this because this might be something that you're moving through currently uh, in your own life uh, and if you are I, I just really want to reach out to you and, um, and just know that I'm sending you love. Uh, it can be one of the hardest times in our life. Hey Nat, great to have you on darling. Um, can be one of the, the most challenging times in our life if we're moving through grief, uh, loss or a major setback and a major setback you know can be a major health condition, it might be a financial loss, uh, it, it can also obviously grief and loss. Hey Britt, hey Sandra, lovely to have you guys on. Um, it could be um, obviously you know relationship breakdown, uh, you know experiencing that sense of grief and loss, it could be uh, just family dynamics have shifted, uh, perhaps the kids have left home or are leaving home um, it could be uh, major things that have just kind of happened out of the blue and I think the the major thing here to keep in mind and of course you know the loss of a loved one um, can bring about really really uh, deep and strong emotion and can leave us feeling quite often powerless and out of control and this can be a really really difficult thing to actually move through and I notice in myself I know um, if I'm experiencing some challenging emotions or particularly uh, you know it was over 10 years ago uh, or just over nine years ago actually sorry uh, that my mum passed uh, in 2010 and I remember at the time uh, trying to take care of everybody else and trying to really like it was just like focusing on everything else and everybody else because to feel what I was actually feeling was way too painful and I think we can often do this and it can be resourceful for a time uh, until it's not and everybody's journey uh, through their own uh, personal life stages or through grief and loss or a major setback is very, very personal. And I think that can also lead to feelings of isolation because um, when, when it does feel so personal, it feels like nobody else gets this, nobody else knows what I'm going through, nobody else knows you know, how hard this is for me. And I, I remember having all of those thoughts and beliefs uh, at the time, and it really can lead us to feeling very, very isolated from people and just feeling like nobody else gets kind of where I'm at. And I remember also just feeling my life completely topsy-turvy. It was like I'd landed in this foreign land Nobody spoke my language anymore. I couldn't communicate effectively. Um, and I was really trying to focus on external things as a way of getting back control. And uh, it, it honestly, it was really, really challenging for me at the time. And so I noticed when I am trying to get back control because it is one of the uh, six human needs uh, which is the need for certainty and the need to know everything's going to be okay and at that time during a major life crisis or when we're going through a major life event we don't you know there is an absolute loss of certainty we don't know how things are going to work out uh, and if any of you have been following me for a while you know that you know I'm an avid uh, I guess professor of um, <laughs> and, and by professor I mean I like to profess about law of attraction and you know where our focus goes is where our energy flows uh, Tony Robbins obviously there but um, it, it's so so true you know and it's a challenging time because we've got all of these um, really powerful, strong, deep, uh, often um, kind of what we would deem in the in the traditional sense, you know, negative emotions going on, um, which can be really, really challenging. And so, uh, when when we're when we've lost that feeling of control, we we feel like we've lost control of our external circumstances, or lost control of the circumstance. We will look for other ways to seek or to gain, regain a sense of control. Now, there's some really healthy ways to do that, and there's some pretty unhealthy ways of doing that. Unhealthy ways can be pouring ourselves into everything and everybody, and just getting so busy with work and everything else. Hey, Bet, great to have you on, darling. Um, it really can be very, very. Um, 
unresourceful over a long period of time. In the short term, it may serve you uh, because it, you may not be in a situation where you know you can kind of take a step back from things. I know I definitely felt like that. Uh, I was a single mum at the time. Uh, I was moving, um, trying to build my business, and there was just so much kind of going on. And I felt like um, I really needed to be there to support my dad. I felt very responsible. And so if you've had that pattern play out for you as well, good morning, gorgeous lady Erica. Lovely to have you on, darling. Um, I felt incredibly, um, you know, responsible for how everybody was, for everybody's happiness. And I can promise you that, you know, that pattern won't just present then. It will have played out for a long term um, beforehand. Hey, Tiles, great to have you on, darling. Um, so it, it's really one of those things where we will seek that external control through other means or through other ways. Uh, for me, sometimes that can show up as drinking coffee as a way to like push through or to control my physical energy um, or just even um, to try and it sounds crazy because I know that coffee obviously induces anxiety um, or if you know having too much coffee can produce anxiety for some people um, but for me you know up to a certain point it can be quite calming as well for me it's like a, a warm friend hugging me in the morning and I know that might sound funny but you know we can have all of these different um, experiences as, as well hey Erica hey Dan lovely to have you guys on um, Another thing that I noticed for myself, and um, ladies out there, you may uh, recognize this within yourself as well, is I clean. I want a clean house. If I can control my environment, I feel um, slightly more in control internally. But uh, when I'm excessive in that, or I buy a lot of food, that can be the other way. Because like, if we think about it, just from a survival instinct, um, if we're uncertain, like if we've got base security, like our home is okay, we've got enough food, it can kind of give, um, even even though it's an illusory um, sense of control, but it can kind of like help with that. Um emotional eating was a huge thing for me because every single time my belly felt full there was a greater feeling of security even if like my emotions were out of control certainly didn't help me weight wise I put on 10 kilos within a two month period of my mum passing um, so again resourceful unresourceful things and I'm just sharing some of these things from my own personal experience your experience might be very different I know for other people they they just they don't eat, they can't eat. Uh, for me, it was just like desperately trying to fill a void that was unable to be filled. Uh, it was learning to live with the loss and, um, and you know, that's not an easy task by any means. Um, the other, so I'll run through a few things that could really be supportive in a really resourceful way for you as well, is definitely take time for yourself. Take time to feel your emotions as much as you can. I know this is not always possible and particularly if we're at work or we're working a nine to five job sometimes those strong emotions can arise during the day um, and it's not always possible to you know have 20 minutes out to have a good cry or just but allow yourself create the space for yourself say no to the things that really you know are not um, necessary for you or not needed for you at the moment really give back to yourself it's so important to have love and compassion for yourself during this time and to gently treat yourself so gently so kindly um, taking great care of our physical body is so 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 important and um, I'm sure you know we all know this logically uh, but again like um, for me you know my emotional eating was a little bit out the window I was staying at my dad's at the time um, I'd moved my family out there to be able to, to help my dad uh, support uh, my mum uh, in caring for her in her latter stages of um, her illness. And, you know, um, so I was eating all this food that I wouldn't normally eat. So go back to nature, go back to what you know is the right food for you. It may not be, you know, you might be craving sugar. Uh, if you are craving sugar, it generally comes from trying to get more sweetness into our life at a time where it may not feel very sweet. Um, there may not be that, but if you're having sugar cravings, that's what's actually going on. Get out in sunshine. I know you may not feel like getting outside or it may not feel like going outside. Oh, bless Erica. That's my pleasure, darling. Um, yeah, absolutely, sweetie. Check in anytime, darling. And if you've got any questions as well, please feel free to um, to jump in. And you have a great day too, darling. Um, so, you know, coming back to filling our body with what it nutritionally needs. When we support our body, you have greater emotional resilience. If you're laying awake, and I know sometimes, obviously, if we've got big stresses or we've got big concerns going on or we can't stop our mind of a night time, sleep may be interrupted. Try and get a nap in um, during the day. Uh, 
um, or you know if that leads to greater insomnia um, you know there's some great sleep courses out there I did one recently um, by EQ consulting uh, that may be helpful for you uh, and there's a great book by I think uh, dr. Matt Walker I'm pretty sure that was his name why we sleep um, it's a, an amazing um, course so if you've been in long-term grief uh, I know for me it didn't really feel like things were getting better for me for about two years after my mum passed and I know that that sounds like a long time um, but that was the time where I actually stopped crying every day um, the six month mark for me was particularly difficult the six to seven months it was just like the reality of it really started to hit home um, and was really um, difficult and absolutely Dan going for a walk is really really good too absolutely um, simply because like we're moving our body now what happens when we're trying to suppress our body uh, suppress our emotions not feel what we're feeling because we don't want to kind of open that vault and I've certainly felt like that before um, is we will find a tendency to like to be really stagnant within our body moving the body actually starts to move the emotions um, be believe it or not you know the emotions are quite suppressed and they get Get trapped within our cellular memory it's why when you feel depressed you have a certain posture because it's in our muscle memory when we feel confident again you know both emotions obviously but very different emotions you're going to stand a different way you're going to feel a different way when you're getting out and you're looking up um, and all of those things because when we look down that's when we're really accessing our emotions and the first thing that we do is we contract when we're depressed or when we're um, really sad obviously or going through an emotionally intense feeling Feeling. Hey Christine, great to have you on honey. Um, and we quite often we'll focus our eyes down or we're looking down. When you're looking down, you're accessing your kinesthetic cortex. That is your feeling cortex in your brain. When you start to look out, if you're looking equal, that's your audio cortex. So you're tapping into what can I hear? Um, what am I noticing? You know, the birds, things like that. Um, birds chirping in the morning or cars, distant cars or distant noises. Or when you look up, now you're actually in the visual cortex what can I see and we start to greet the world taking big deep breaths again takes you out of that fight flight response so if you're having trouble sleeping there's some really great restorative yoga poses as well that really help to reset your sympathetic nervous system back to parasympathetic so um, when um, when we're in a, a really high time of stress that's where like generally it's go 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 it's like the tigers chasing me I've got to escape this I've got to get away from it where we're literally trying to run away from ourselves or trying to run away from our emotions now that's what creates um, a lot of cortisol in our system which creates a lot of acid in our system creates a lot of inflammation um, and eventually disease if we're not actually shifting that thought pattern or moving through our grief and um, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross she wrote many beautiful amazing books a lady did astounding work um, on death and dying and grief and loss um, I'd highly recommend um, getting one of her books she explains like the grief cycle and just how so many people just need to be heard to be able to express what's actually going on for them quite often we're locking that stuff down we're keeping that stuff um, held within which is really really challenging for us so um, understanding the grief cycle you know all the different emotions emotions that you're going to experience it could be denial it could be sadness um, it could be um, guilt uh, I know I when I started feeling my day started improving a little bit um, I actually felt guilty for that and I felt guilty for actually feeling like I was having um, a good time or you know if I laughed I actually felt guilty now if we put the shoe on the other foot if your loved one was still here and you had passed what is it that you you would want for your loved one and I think that that's a really important factor um to be able to bring into consideration as well um, but it, it, it is a phase of that as well you know we can feel guilty for still being um, alive when when our loved one may have passed so all of those things can kind of play out um, so we've got denial we've got guilt um, sadness anger is very very common um, as well which anger is just deeply deeply suppressed 
real pain, hurt, um, a sadness, all of those things. So um, allowing yourself a safe space to release that anger. Um, I often found when I released the anger, I would actually um, end up crying a lot afterwards as well. Um, as I started to move more and more through um, my grief and just, you know, I had major, other major life changes. My marriage had broken down at the time. I was um, trying to restart a career. Like there was just so many different things kind of going on that I'd feel very overwhelmed. But when I'd feel that emotion arise, I would literally walk in and just go oh my god I feel tightness in my chest if you're experiencing asthma uh, quite often that is grief held so deeply within the lungs and having a really really good cry will often just release that pressure or it's like um, I used to explain it like an elephant sitting on my chest so you may resonate with that feeling having a good cry just releasing that if you're tense across your shoulders up here you know that's again we're contracted we're holding it all in and quite often we can can want to shut down our heart um, and not feel anything and I promise you it's like one of the most challenging things that we can do is be willing to open our heart allow those emotions to flow in and flow out because as you're doing that you'll actually allow yourself more joy and more harmony more peace um, and that feeling of being deeply loved or deeply held and that's another thing that I think is really helpful in these times is you know, uh, what is your spirituality? What is your faith? Um, I'm certainly not religious, but I definitely believe in a higher power. I believe in divine love. I believe that everything is happening for a purpose or a reason. And the meaning that you make on any event in your life is really going to either disempower you or empower you. Um, and for a long time, the meaning that I made uh, around my mum passing was you know she's left me and I'm all alone I felt very very abandoned um, and just like so isolated and so alone so um, by switching that around and really understanding at a very high soul level and it took me two years to get there so don't keep put pressure on yourself um, if it does take a little while to get there um, but from a soul perspective it was like oh my god I know that this actually had to happen I believe that you know I don't know whether you guys believe in soul contracts or not but for me that was an empowering meaning of my god this actually had to happen um, because I couldn't have got the lessons without this and would I have my mum back in a heartbeat if I could absolutely but I understood a much larger picture that was actually happening and unfolding and the lessons that I needed to learn in my life and perhaps you know mum's soul lesson as well um, and I think that that's true of all situations and sometimes when we're moving through those circumstances it can be very difficult um, to understand you know well, why has this happened or why is this happening why am I going through this experience but I do have a very deep powerful belief that life is happening for me not to me and it's in the greatest of adversities that whole period of my life without that I wouldn't be a quarter of the person I am today and there's no way that I'd be able to share some of these things with you guys as well um, and with you know a lot of my clients that I work with one-to-one -one in how to start to shift things and how to start to change things because without that personal experience you know it's one thing to learn something obviously out of a textbook but it's a very different thing to be living it day to day and the empathy and the compassion then that we can have for others from living some of those life circumstances circumstances uh, and I know you know lots of other people have been through way worse experiences um, but it's all relative as well so um, don't beat up on yourself if you are going through a really hard time or you've had a major life setback um, and somebody else that you know is going through a harder time you know don't judge yourself on that have compassion for where you're at it's all relative to our own life experience and I think that that's a really important thing to keep in mind as well but the main things guys it's really just taking good care of your physical body. Don't make any other major life decisions at the moment. Take as much off your plate as possible. Get out, move your body, um, whether it's yoga, whether it's stretching, you know, you don't have to go and um, do a, a massive workout at the gym or go for a 20K run or, you know, like any of that stuff, although that can be helpful. Some of my um, biggest moments of where I was really exerting myself, it seemed to shift a lot of emotion and I'd kind of get to this place where I'd like literally just I'd be halfway through a workout and I'd bawl my eyes out like um, for five or ten minutes and then just go okay I think I feel better and then I'd have all this extra energy as well because it takes so much hey Megan great to have you on 
it takes so much energy to suppress that emotion it takes so much energy to actually keep our heart shut and that's what leaves us feeling um, physically so emotionally exhausted and drained and yes it is absolutely emotionally exhausting and physically exhausting um, and mentally exhausting shifting through all of that because your mind your neural pathways in your mind are now actually happening to create new neural pathways and new synaptic connections in order to comprehend this new reality that you're now living and so that takes a period of time it takes a period of adjustment and even um, you know it might be crazy to say this but like I still have moments where I'm like just uh, not even in a vague moment really but it's just like oh I'll give mum a call and tell her this and then it's like oh no I, I won't be able to do that but I connect with my mum through my heart I connect with her through love uh, and I feel her presence very very strongly um, if you're moving through other you know major setbacks like a financial loss again being as kind to yourself as possible compassionate with yourself blame doesn't get us anywhere and quite often we will blame and shame ourselves criticize ourselves for where we're at and all that does is it will keep you in perpetual cycle of that financial setback it won't empower you to step into the changes perhaps that you need to be making um, if it's a difficult relationship that you're in that you're feeling like uh, you need to be leaving hey Joe great to have you on darling um, again kindness and compassion with yourself um, blaming self shaming self um, quite often when we feel ashamed we'll often blame another for our life circumstances simply because we're feeling such a level of shame I truly believe shame is the deepest and the hardest emotion um, to experience as a human being um, it, it's it's such a, a really just detrimental um, emotion because it really has us feeling unworthy of living well for me that's my experience with shame when I feel so ashamed of who I am and the distinction um, if you're wanting to hear more about this definitely jump into Brene Brown um, she's got so many great talks on vulnerability and um, moving through shame um, and shame really needs to be spoken out loud um, one of the, the main things uh, particularly uh, with the feelings of shame and for for me it was just you know I am unworthy I'm a bad person whereas guilt is more I did the wrong thing or the my behavior was wrong whereas with shame we believe that we're wrong as a person innately um, there's also um, you know I'm a burden or I'm fundamentally flawed sometimes that can come up for people uh, and those two other beliefs are spoken about in Gay Hendricks book The Big Leap um, it can be a great book as well uh, quite often when we're um, pushing through to the next level which is obviously a totally different topic and conversation to this video but quite often those beliefs can kind of come up that we've we've had these um, deep beliefs for a long period of time that I'm a burden I'm not worthy I'm fundamentally flawed so there's something really wrong with me um, and it was really interesting because when I first read that book there was other things that really resonated but I didn't actually uh, recognize the fundamentally flawed one I'm like no no that doesn't really resonate um, and then I realized that when I feel shame I I feel like there's really something wrong with me there's something um, wrong with me as a person and it puts me into doubt it puts me into fear it stops me from taking action so all of those things really can compound um, and particularly if you've got multiple uh, things going on at the one time for me I had uh, my divorce happening uh, which meant I was financially unstable as well because I'd just gone from um, having a two income household back to one income and at the time I was only earning $300 a week I was also starting to um, look at it different study options and wanting to take out my um, start a new business uh, and then just managing um, the grief and loss of losing my mum at the same time as well so quite often you know when it rains it pours obviously um, and there can be a lot that we've actually got to manage and deal with at that time so physical and mental well-being is so 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 important at this point in time so if um, this really resonates for you or perhaps you're moving through a really challenging time please reach out to me if it's physical health and, and mental well-being um, you know um, there's so many great programs out there um, I'm um, definitely a huge advocate of whole food eating um, really taking great care of our body uh, when we do that we just function a lot better and it will really support you through some of those more difficult times hey Deb great to have you on sweetheart um, it, it's 
very, very powerful to obviously be doing those things. Um, and we can have a chat and just see kind of where you're at, what's going on for you and help you to take the steps forward that will help you to get things back on track. I think the most important thing to remember is that it won't always be this hard. Um, that was one of the, the main things that um, was really difficult for me, particularly um, straight after my mum had passed, was that it just felt like it would be endless torment. And, um, and you know, eventually, you know, things did get easier. It, um, and I don't like the statement, time heals all things. I think working through our, our emotions and feeling different things um, as we go through that and trying to um, find an empowering meaning or, you know, this, the greater soul lesson within that for us um, or just a feeling into the love is really powerful. Hey, Em, great to have you on. Hey, Kayla. Um, it's so powerful just to tap into that divine love. And um, I know for me, just even personally surrendering to divine love and going... I'm falling, just catch me, um, and just allowing myself to to rest. And uh, quite a few of you may have uh, read my blog post the other day about um, just uh, love will never leave you. Love is always there. It's only when we shut down our heart. It's only when we turn away from that in our own pain, which is very human. Um, but it's when we turn away from it that we feel abandoned by love, um, or we feel that love or divine love is is not there or is not present in our life. And uh, you may have read the footprint story and I, I just love that um, you know it, it's such a powerful analogy for um, really uh, we have so much guidance we have so much around us that's assisting us and it is there and of course at all times you know reach out to somebody that you love trust uh, and care about hey so great to have you on um, that you can speak with uh, about your deepest emotions that aren't fearful of what what you're actually feeling um, is really, really important. And uh, if you haven't got uh, somebody in your personal life that you're able to do that, reach out to a qualified professional around that. Um, I'm certainly here to support people in, in their journeys in all sorts of ways. Uh, so if uh, that resonates for you or you feel like, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, or perhaps you know, you've been through an experience and it might have been 12 months or two years or five years, you know, grief can be such a uh, incredible journey journey and incredible is probably not the right word but it really can be you know a topsy-turvy journey where you know you're feeling guilt and shame and anger and sadness all at the one time or perhaps denial and not feeling anything for a long time uh, I know some clients that I've worked with you know they didn't actually allow themselves to feel their grief of their parent um, passing for you know 5 10 15 20 30 years uh, that might have happened when they were a very young child and they felt they had to support their mum um, or for whatever reason so there's no timeline with any of this stuff you can't get it wrong uh, there's no particular way to move through it it's all very very personal but what I would recommend is just coming back to your heart center and just tapping into what do I need to do for me today what's the best way to support me today and if it's just drinking more water and getting some healthy food into your body you know that's a great start um, quite often just getting up having a shower uh, I find you know even uh, uh, on normal days if I'm not feeling great you know um, jumping in having a shower just taking care of myself, you know, that's that self-love, just showing up for myself in that way. Um, and if that's all that happens that day, that's that's okay. I give myself permission around that. My days are not like that every day, obviously. Um, but when I need it, it's really important to be able to give yourself that self-love. And uh, if there's one thing that, you know, I would have changed uh, probably years ago, um, not that I live in regret or anything because everything's happening perfectly, but if, if there's one thing that, you know, I could give that gift to somebody else, is just love yourself, love on yourself, be kind and compassionate with yourself. So I truly hope that served you guys today. Um, if anybody's got any questions or, you know, you're moving through one of these personal experiences yourself, please feel free just to reach out, um, send me a PM and we can have a chat and see if and how I might be able to help you. But otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. So much love to you all. And uh, I truly hope that that's added value. Please like, love and share that uh, if that's been of value to you and uh, that's really helped you or perhaps you know somebody that it could really help and make a difference to as well. So have an amazing day, guys. Lots of love. Bye.